Good morning, everybody. Are we awake? Yeah? Good. I was uh, this morning, I was, I think, about uh, five o'clock. I, I, went, I went out of my bed and uh, drove, uh, drove here. I live in the middle part of Holland. Um, and I want to be early because I didn't want to go in a traffic jam. Uh, which apparently failed, so uh, I was in a traffic jam. And the story I'm, I'm about to tell, I think, today, from a business perspective, is uh, that we also had a traffic jam and we are finding a solution with o uh, OpenShift to solve that. Um, but that leaves me, I hope, I, is there a clicker somewhere? Ah, here. Um, who am I? Um, I have uh, the honor to be uh, uh, one of the managers of the OpenShift and oh no, what the manager of the OpenShift and Linux uh, uh, team we have at Achmea. Achmea is one of the largest insurers in Holland. Uh, we do health insurance, we do uh, mortgages, we do cl uh, claims insurance. About 15,000 people working for us. Um, we have, I have a team of about 30, uh, well, it says over here, great people, and they really are great people, uh, divided into uh, three, five, three teams for Linux Ansible and two teams separate for uh, the OpenShift uh, development. And we have the responsibility for approximately 200 uh, deployments uh, service, either in cloud or uh, on-prem, and about 250 uh, namespaces that we use. Also, <laughs> development, acceptance, uh, et cetera, et cetera. And that's what we do. And uh, a time ago, uh, Red Hat asked me, um, can you tell us something about an implementation that you did? And an implementation, I think, is interesting for a lot of people to at least understand or get some, some knowledge about. And it was for us, uh, well, um, also a, a journey to, to do this right. Um, let me tell you something about that. Um, as you can imagine, uh, Achmea, as a financial organization, has a lot of financial models. They, we have a lot of whiz kids uh, calculating uh, risk uh, premiums, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So, and we have a lot of uh, financial data also, uh, customer data, financial data, whatever. Um, so those 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 guys and and girls, by the way, uh, they need to calculate with this data uh, what the next premium is, Bef because if there is an increase. And for, well, let's say um, a half year life expectancy, uh, premiums have to be recalculated. So that's a lot of work uh, that has to be done. And they have, uh, we have models for that. And one of those models is uh, K KPM. I will uh, tell it in Dutch. Uh, it's a Kapitaal Prognose model. And uh, basically it's a, a sto stochastic uh, process calculating uh, some financial data. Whatever the financial data is, I don't think uh, that's too interesting for here. Um, it, we used to do that with MATLAB, but uh, apparently, uh, from a business point of view, that was too expensive. And they built a new solution. And they built it in C-sharp. It was also, um, they, they tried to do it in Python and uh, NR, uh, but basically C-sharp was better for parallel processing and we had a lot more uh, C-sharp uh, knowledge internally than uh, Python and, uh, and R. Um, and what they did, they, they built something and we implemented that. It was implemented. By the way, it wasn't implemented by me, but I'm just the manager. Um, and what, what they did, they implemented it on ten, uh, 10 calculation engine and the process has to run. We have to do about 2,000 uh, sub-processes uh, and it runs 24/7, uh, uh, 27 to 30 hours straight, um, and that takes a lot of time. And if you have to do it uh, more than once a month, it takes a lot of time, and uh, and it's not efficient. Um, and we also have an, an interest in doing things a little bit more efficient and cost-effective. Um, because if you have 10 uh, fixed machines in our data center and you only use them for, let's say, well, maybe maximum two days a, year, uh, a month, uh, it's rather expensive and not very efficient. So 
what we, um, what, well, I, I always say we, but basically it's they who did it. I, I'm just telling the story. Um, what, what, what they did uh, is um, rewrote the architecture. The original architecture was, and I tried to make it as simple as possible, uh, was that they have a complete process and they divided it up in, in single steps and they wanted to optimize each step. And they thought, oh, that's a good idea. Let's optimize each step and we can run those parallel, hence the C-sharp uh, uh, programming language. Eventually, that wasn't uh, the, the good way to go, so what they did, okay, we have one complete process, one step, and we can better uh, uh, run those parallel, and that's what they did. Um, but if you want to scale that up, that means that you need more, uh, uh, well, processing power, basically. Um, and as I said, uh, that's a little bit expensive and not very efficient. In the same time, uh, Achmea as a, a company, and probably we are not the only one in this world, is making a transition towards the cloud. We have traditional data centers, but we are moving our data centers to the cloud. We already have a, a very large SAP uh, uh, setup in the cloud, uh, but basically what we are going to do is move all our stuff from the data center to the cloud. And uh, we do this on an Azure cloud. Um, <coughs> sorry. And we want to do that because we think uh, it's more dynamic. You can use it as pay as you go, use it whenever you want. And that's what we are uh, currently doing. And we have, of course, uh, implemented OpenShift on, uh, open on, on cloud. We also had it on-prem, but on for, uh, happily we are, we are getting rid of that. Uh, it was a bit of a pain in, I'm sorry for my language, in the ass. Uh, but uh, we are having this now on the cloud. And the combination of OpenShift and clouds gives us the possibility to scale up and scale down, because that's the, the basic of, um, of uh, OpenShift. And it also gives us the the capability to d make a cost-efficient uh, solution, um, which is KPM. Now, I come back to my traffic jam. Um, what we currently have implemented is, uh, 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 there's a drawing over here, but never mind, uh, it's too small, I think, for you to have. Um, we have a calculation path, and then we calculate and it takes about seven to eight minutes to do one path complete. And one calculation engine is four CPU and 10 gig memory. But we need to have 2,000 of those calculation paths to do the complete uh, uh, um, uh, calculation, the complete projection. So what we can do is scale up from basically zero or one to 100 uh, machines in the OpenShift. And we can do that within approximately one hour time. We can scale up within one hour from basically one or two machines, which are constantly running because it, it has to run somewhere, to uh, 100. And that means that instead of 27 hours to 30 hours, we now have, well, approximately uh, two and a half to three hours to do the complete calculation um, instead of those 10 fixed machines. And of course, if there is less uh, less power needed, all right, we, scale, we can scale down. If there's more needed, we can scale up, but there's a catch. Um, but this is what we do. And um, on a cost-efficient point of view, we did some rough calculations. I think we saved the company about half a million uh, a year only for this calculation only. Beca and because we ha don't have to have uh, 90 extra fixed machines in our data center, which costs a lot of money. We have a quarrel, uh, uh, Marlene, we still have to do some, uh, some uh, subscription uh, uh, negotiations, I think, but we'll, we'll get there. Um, uh, one way or the other, I hope. Uh, but that's that's uh, that's the idea, 
and it's huge. So, um, yeah, that's what we did. And I say we uh, again, but one of the engineers is in the back room. Actually, he did it. Um, but what did we learn? Sorry, what did we learn? Um, the first thing is that there is a difference in how the business views uh, Azure Cloud, or cloud in general, I think, and how we look at it. Um, I have many conversations with uh, business managers, and they say, yeah, but the cloud, you can do it and uh, scale up and scale down, and then, in, in, in general, we, we can't, because there's a limit in the amount of hardware that Microsoft has in his data center. You can't scale uh, endlessly. And um, uh, from Ahmed's point of view, we have a constraint. We only want to be in the in the in the West Europe uh, Azure cloud. We don't want to be somewhere else. Uh, I think there's a cost thing and a compliance thing uh, I involved. Um, but West Europe is a heavy used zone. So um, if you want to have, oh, I'm sorry, it's not part of the show. Evacuate the building, I think it means. Somebody is a... Uh, shit happens. My time is up. <laughs> yeah, go down. Yeah, 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 yeah. I have missed mine. It's over. Stay down, stay down. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm sorry if you was in the in the audience if you look uh, if you if you look from uh, from uh, from Teams or whatever Zoom uh, the the fire alarm just went off. Uh, I I I, I uh, have the opinion that you um, well maybe you wanted to go. That might be somebody put a lighter on there. I want to go. Um, so uh, what I was uh, stating is that, from a business point of view, um, capacity is not always available. And if you want to have a certain type of machine in the Azure cloud, um, <laughs> there's a limit to what they have, um, unfortunately. So what we did to get those 100 calculations engine is try to get all different types and put that in OpenShift. And it worked. It worked perfectly. So we didn't put one type of a machine that you can have in the Azure Cloud, but we tried different ones, and it works. So also that gives uh, some flexibility, but it's a difficult, it's, it's something you have to discuss with your, with your business partner, because they, they don't understand. Um, so that's what the availability is. Um, the second one is, uh, is that the application, of course, and for, from, from our perspective, probably this sounds like a duh, uh, but uh, the application should be uh, uh, perfect. Uh, should be able to support uh, scalability, because if it's not, it doesn't work. I have in my we have an ODF uh, cluster and uh, an, uh, with 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 a, a stateful cluster, and there's one application. And w when I do an update, they get all panicky because it, the, the application doesn't support that. So we have to forcefully do that during off hours, uh, off, uh, off office hours to the update, which, which basically, uh, sorry again for my language, it sucks. It's not, the, the, we shouldn't do that. Um, so you should have an application that is capable of doing that. But this also means that the developers developing the application should be Kubernetes aware of uh, scalability and auto-scaling options. And that's not always the case. So we also have some, well, maybe some, some a, a job to do in communicating to them or telling them what the options are. Yeah. And currently, the KPM engine is perfectly suited from a, a CPU point of view. But of course, there are more options. Yeah. The, the Kubernetes uh, event-driven uh, auto-scaling option gives you more flexibility to do that. Um, I was just telling you that we can scale up to a thousand within an hour, a uh, hundred within one hour. 
and I also tell you that there's a limit to what you can do. And this is the reason why. If you scale up, it takes time. You don't only need to scale up the, the, the node or whatever, but the complete cluster has to scale up. So that means the logging, everything has to scale up. That takes time. Um, if you have a calculation that takes one hour complete to run, or two hours, then after a certain moment, it's no use anymore to scale uh, up new machines. So there's a difference, because it takes more time to scale up new machines than to do ac the actual calculation. So there's a limit to what you can do. Of course, what you can do is say, okay, we scale up five hours before they do the calculation to 2,000 machines, whatever you want. Um, but that's not cost efficient. That's, uh, that's not efficient. So that's not what we are doing. So that's the, the limit that we learned. And the, the last thing uh, we, uh, we have done is if you s scale up, scale down too often, it gets... Now, well, it's not good uh, for the health of the system. So we, we put some dampening in it. Don't ask me how they did it, by the way, the, 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 the guys. But what we did is not go like this, but make it more smooth. So it takes about three, three minutes delay we have uh, to actually do the open shift, um, well, trend, uh, the, the shift between scaling up and scaling down a little bit more smoother, and it runs more efficient. Um, that also doesn't help, of course, if you want to scale up pretty fast. Um, but for us, that's the, the efficient thing to, uh, to do. Um, so that's what we yeah. learned. And the last thing, uh, w we're not ready yet. We're, we're certainly not ready yet. What are we going to do next? Um, of course, we are currently busy uh, trying to implement Aro. Um, why haven't we done that? Because when we started, uh, Aro was not, from a compliance point of view, not suitable for Achmea yet. Currently, I think it's, uh, it's, it's good enough, so we are currently uh, able to, to, to use it, and uh, the next step for us is to uh, implement it. Um, the, the thing uh, the developers currently are doing is trying to have the data transfer to the models, to financial models, more smoothly uh, via ETL uh, tooling. Um, and we are uh, currently, I'm currently in conversation with either BI uh, guys, data warehouse guys, or uh, other uh, uh, financial uh, models to have them also implemented. And what we see is a growing wish to have uh, during off hours, off, off office hours, I'm sorry, um, be able to, uh, to do quick calculations with a lot of uh, power and then scale down again. And that's what we are currently uh, doing. And of course, uh, we are constantly uh, improving ourselves. Uh, the basically, what we are doing is, of course, looking at our processes. Uh, uh, do we, are we still efficient and improving? But I think everybody is doing, uh, doing that. Um, and I think that's it. So what we have, I think, is a solution uh, that doesn't have a traffic jam, but we have much, a lot of roads that we can build up, scale down, to do the calculation efficiently, fast. And um, that's what we did. And it runs smoothly, uh, without hindrance. Business is happy, and if they are happy, we are also happy. Thank you very much. <laughs> if there are questions, by the way, um, I will be here. Uh, but you can also ask him now. But n please, not too technical, because I'm the just a manager. <laughs> yeah. No, 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 no. The, the data comes from all the systems. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just do the calculation and then thro uh, throw it away. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good question. I know, I know, I know. There, there's two two reasons. Uh, we have currently have uh, one. Uh, we also are uh, uh, available in uh, Northern Europe, in Dublin. 
uh, but we are scaling that down and eventually uh, trying to get rid of it. In West Europe, you have three zones. From our perspective, that's more than enough. Two in Middlemere and one in Amsterdam. So that's where our OpenShift cluster resides. Um, we can't go outside the European Union because we have to adhere to uh, European compliance rules. And that means... Uh, sorry? Yes, yes, yes. But there, there, there's a company, uh, company policy that says, okay, we just want to be in West Europe. Um, and and oh, I have two less, uh, not enough stripes on my, uh, my shoulder to make, to do that, uh, undo that decision. But basically it's a cost efficient and a compliance issue that we uh, did. And we, we are in, the, in Dublin, but we are trying to get it back. It was too, I, I think it was too expensive. I haven't seen the calculation, but I can, I can, if you want to know, I can show you somebody who can help you with that, but it's not interesting. Other questions? I have to close, by the way. Now you're asking a te technical questions. <laughs> I don't know. But there's an engineer at the back. Uh, maybe he can, uh, can answer it for you. And if you come to me, I will show him. Uh, and, and yeah. Yeah? All right. You're welcome. Bye-bye. <laughs>